Even the Buddha left his child and wife, and he left everything to pursue enlightenment. As much as I honor and respect, and I'm really appreciative for <clears throat> the techniques that I have learned that he developed. Um, you know, uh, for 2,500 years, the idea is that you will become a monk. You have to deprive yourself and life of your being in the world. So I always think, okay, so this wonderful wisdom that has benefited me, as I said, I not only teach meditation, but I have been a dedicated meditator, meditator for years. Um, how that impacts my world, or is only a masturbatory pleasure for me? Oh, I am in line. Oh, I, you know, if it doesn't impact my the way I relate to my sisters, to my mom, to my colleagues, to my partners at work, you know. So how can this wonderful uh, wisdom of mindfulness, for instance, impact society? And that's why my okay, my motto is one project at a time. We can change our world with the wisdom project. But my overall goal is to democratize wisdom, to bring mm. all these um, techniques and practices of the past to be shared by the community at large. The same way that we all right now can read and write, that not being able to read and write is a big um, challenge to function in a productive society and it's the responsibility of our governments to educate everybody so people have access to this technology, the technology of writing and the technology of reading. I believe that the technology of wisdom is also something that has to be shared, that has to be democratized. Uh, Jesus <clears throat> um, uh, we don't know exactly what happened between his 12th and 30th birthday, but apparently he went someplace to be trained. And then already when he was preaching, there was a time when he went to the desert. I think it was for 40 days. Uh, and he was tempted by the devil. You know, he was tempted. So he had to practice certain discipline. And the Buddha also, after three years of practicing all types of meditations of his time. One day he said, okay, I'm just going to sit below this fig tree and I'm not going to stand until I get enlightened. And he spent 39 days sitting there without moving. So there is practice. There is this discipline. And Socrates, the legend goes that he was able to stand, um, you know, supported by a column, you know, with his back on the column. And he didn't move for like, I don't know, three hours or three days or whatever. So um, there is this discipline that people cultivate in them. So mm -hmm. what are the disciplines? What are the practices where we can be fathers and mothers and uncles and, and, and daughters and productive members of our work community and our community at large, and at the same time cultivate these practices in a way that is not monastic? And so that's what I am uh, trying to do, and, and also many other people, not only me, um, because um, society has become so complex. The problems now are wicked, and we cannot expect that because we went to school and perhaps we got a college degree and we are successful at work, we have the capacity to understand all the things that are happening around us because the society has become very, very, very complex. So it's very easy to get manipulated. Um, there is a new branch of psychology. Well, not so new, but it's a new branch of psychology called liminal psychology or no. Imaginal psychology. Mm. Imaginal means uh, that you can cultivate something that is bigger than your imagination because it's felt. It's when, like, when you are in the presence of a religious experience, when you go to church, mm. when you are at the presence of um, a beautiful child that is learning to walk, there is this feeling that 
you, you said it at the beginning, it's almost like sacred, okay? So imaginal psychology has built a whole set of tools to help people using their imagination in a very felt sense to take care of different psychopathologies. For instance, there is a something called exposure therapy, where mm. people who have, let's say, fear of spiders, they let to imagine, but feeling not only in, oh, I'm imagining that I am watching a spider. No, no, no. I am imagining that I am really in front of the spider. The spider is going to bite me, da, da, da. And then people get healed by practicing imaginal psychology. So um, I don't know where I'm going with this. I just got, was going to, I was talking about the need to make these things popular. Then yes. they need to make them accessible to people. So when you, the, the, let's say you, like you are an engineer, when you're confronted with a big, big challenge at work, you can use some of these tools, knowing that seriously, seriously, by doing imaginal work, imagining that you have solved the problem, whatever problem you have at work, you will develop new ideas on how to do it and you will be able to do it. So in my work as an organizational consultant, um, you know, you go to an organization, everybody has a degree, everybody is kind of even, you know, if they complain, they, they have a middle class job, they have a career, so things are not bad. And then, so therefore, they knew, they know certain psychological concepts because they read the newspapers, because whatever. Um, but they don't have that integrated in a way that allows them to pierce through, through the problems. And as you were saying a while ago, they do it by accident. Yeah. Oh, it happened, but how do I repeat it? And so that's what I'm trying to do. There are tools that can be organized in a certain way so you can repeat that, so you can make it intentional. As I was saying a few minutes ago, I spoke with two people who finished the wisdom project more than two years ago, and they say, I have, in I have integrated what I learned in my life, so I'm using it all the time. So that's what I mean by democratizing wisdom. And yes, yeah. sometimes it feels sacred. Um, I'm always careful to say that because I don't want to sound religious or something. But when you are committed to life and you are benefiting the, yourself and the people around you, being respectful and respecting, you know, kindness and compassion, it just feels like you're serving, you know, your your community.